All right, scary question here. What will happen if the partner hurts the one with ASPD badly? I'm gonna get murdered. <laughs> It's Kaneko. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be answering all the questions you guys have left in my comment section. I was going to type responses to them but I realized it would take way too long and this might be more fun. Please make sure to like and subscribe. It really really would help me if you click the notification button. Okay so the first thing I want to do is address the comments that suggest that perhaps I've been misdiagnosed and I'm actually a borderline and not an antisocial or narcissist. I've been assessed by almost a dozen psychiatrists. All of them have in unison said that I've had antisocial personality and narcissistic personality. It's not a mistake, it's not up for debate, and unless you're a medical professional and you know my case files, I think you should just step down on that situation and that issue. Because no, I am not a borderline. Not now, not ever. Antisocial personality, and narcissistic personality. I will show documents at some point. The primary differences between me and someone with borderline personality would be the very, very obvious ones, such as guilt, no guilt, no remorse, no empathy. Conscience is built on moral compass as opposed to a genuine conscience. I've also brought up this little Venn diagram because I like Venn diagrams. So things we would have in common would be the impulsive urges, addiction to things, emptiness, got you there, low mood, sometimes, unstable, often, hostile, sometimes, but antisocial people would have fewer emotions, which I can say is true. I mean, I do have emotions, which I did discuss in another video, but they're not nearly as volatile as that of someone with borderline personality disorder. My whole life isn't really dictated by them. Disregard for safety. I do pretty reckless things sometimes. I'm kind of surprised I'm still alive. Dismissive attachment style. That's me. And cons or deceives for profit or pleasure. I can say I've done that in the past. With borderlines, they tend to idealize. They fear abandonment. But I think abandonment is an issue with all of the cluster B. I mean, don't quote me on that one, but I'm fairly certain. And low self-esteem. No, not the same. How soon do you tell people about your diagnoses when you date? So I do like to be very open and upfront with people I date, but I do not go out there saying, hey guys, I've got antisocial personality disorder on like a label or anything. I want someone to get to know me first, to understand the way I work, my personality, and let them see the positive traits I would bring to the relationship before I tarnish it by this very maligned disorder with all of the stigma and all the hatred that's kind of shoved down your throat. I like to give myself a chance and show off who I really am before they find that out. All right, here's a saucy one from Svengali. If you don't have empathy, how are you capable of love? Firstly, I don't think empathy has anything to do with love. I do understand that neurotypicals are empathetic with one another, but that doesn't mean that they'll have a successful relationship, as can be seen in the 51% divorce rate, if it isn't higher, which it probably is. That's not to say that no empathetic people can have good relationships, but I think love is based on compassion, kindness, respect, moral duty, and honor. It's not something that should be something that's related to empathy or guilt or you know these negative emotions that are there to keep you in check i think i can love as much as anybody else regardless of this personality disorder all right can't really read the name on this one but this person has autism and struggles with socialization what's helped you cultivate your charm Okay, so I know that autism, like being on the spectrum, is quite similar to antisocial personality. The difference is, I believe it was explained that people with autism feel but don't understand, and people with ASPD understand but don't feel. I'm not sure that's 100% the case, but that's how I've seen it to be. The way I cultivated charm was 
basically growing up I don't I didn't really know how to react to things and what really made people want to be friends with each other or any any of these like social normal relationships that go on I had to learn everything myself so I mirrored people I went into different social circles and picked up traits from basically everyone everyone has something to offer during this mirroring I just developed this kind of persona that comes on whenever I'm in public or a different group of friends. My personality changes depending on who I'm with, which I'm sure is the case for everybody, but mine is to a higher degree. I don't naturally have the same instincts as an empath or someone who has strong emotional responses. That's also why you'll notice that I don't break eye contact very often. I had to physically teach myself to blink more often, which was really weird. Yeah, and to stop staring at people, it freaks them out. <laughs> but yeah, the way to learn charm is really kind of mirroring others and looking up at videos of successful charming people like, I don't know, who is the most charming person that I know? I have some very um, charismatic people in my family that I look up to and also celebrities like Beyonce, you know, she's just so perfect. So that's a really important thing. Mirroring and looking up examples of who you want to be, just fake it till you make it. Question from default. How about the manipulation trait of this disorder? Isn't it like a computation you have to constantly keep in check? So I think that I am quite manipulative naturally. It's just really, really built in because like I said, I've learned everything from people around me and the examples have been quite manipulative and I have to have those instincts otherwise I don't get the outcomes that I want. I don't think all manipulation is bad. I think you can manipulate people to do good things. I personally am so scared of becoming an abuser or someone who takes this personality disorder and becomes the worst person possible. So I'm always keeping myself in check. I always doubt myself. I'm like, am I doing this to control someone? Am I doing this to be abusive? Am I like, it, it always weighs on my mind. So whenever I manipulate, I try to do it in a good way to have positive outcomes. I'm not a perfect person. I've done some horrible things. And while I don't have remorse about doing them, I've learned from them. And I know objectively that they're wrong. And I think it's a bad thing to manipulate others to do bad things for them, like, you know, to do things that will hurt them eventually because it will come back to me and I don't want that. All right, here's a great question. Is it true your eyes become black when you're angry? No, they become red. You should see it. It's fantastic. But I want to speak to this because all of you guys keep saying I have dead eyes in the comment section. And I'm just like, Okay, I didn't really know that, but yeah, all right. So it's your past stare, there you go. All right, so a good question from Sam, who has a great name, I must say. So do you think that you are the baseline and that when you're void of certain emotions like guilt and shame, you can choose to be a good person? Because there's no emotions involved, kind of like being a blank canvas. Do you think that these emotions that most people feel could actually be worse when it comes to decision making than not having them at all? I'm genuinely asking. So I think that guilt is a terrible mechanism that negatively affects society in general. Of course this is biased, but I think that it's extremely hard to be morally good when you don't have guilt and you don't have empathy or remorse or shame. And that's why I'm so proud of people who have the disorder and still go out of their way to do nice things and to bring about positive change for everybody around them. I think I am a blank canvas and I think it would be good for society to have less of that guilt hanging on their minds. It's not a positive thing at all. It's something that's a manipulation to make you feel a certain way and it's not right. I don't, I don't think it should be a natural human response. I think we're smart enough and evolved enough to not need a mechanism like that to realize that we're wrong when we do certain things. I think humanity would benefit greatly from just compassion, kindness and just social order which 
would punish you for doing horrible things rather than making you feel a certain way. Alright, question from Naomi Bishop. What happens when you're in a relationship with someone with NPD or ASPD? Do you hold them to the same regard as someone who is attentive and caring or do these relationships fizzle out? So it's really an interesting thing when you're dating someone else who has the same disorder as you. This has happened twice for me. So my first boyfriend, who I was very much in love with, and, <coughs> no, <you weren't. coughs> and another person I was dating who was so toxic that he had a very, very checkered criminal history. I do hold them to a different degree, essentially, when I'm dealing with them. This is primarily because I care more about someone who cares about me. When they're kind of in it for themselves, it's hard for me to, as a narcissist myself, to be giving them narcissistic supply when, you know, I need it so badly. It becomes sort of a codependent relationship and it's not really healthy. I think those relationships, they could have worked if they were more committed to change or were willing to at least consider not doing such toxic things. But unfortunately, they were the type of people with ASPD and NPD who chose to do the terrible things rather than putting those impulses away and doing the best for themselves and for the relationship. With empaths, I've not really had that problem. I've had other big issues come up with, you know, insane jealousy or rages and, you know, things like that, which don't come out of a sociopathic relationship because we don't have that internal fire. It's kind of hard to say which one's better, which one isn't. It's challenging when it's two sociopaths or two narcissists. Let me just tell you that much. Question from Victoria. Do you think Alice may have been a psychopath? It's very, very possible. That girl was talented. All right, another question from Victoria. When you say that inside there is nothing, you're just a hollow shell, what exactly do you mean? What I mean by that is I feel like that to me there's only layers and layers of different personalities and different qualities that I've affected over, over time, like I've adopted them from different people. I feel like if you strip all of that away at the core there would be nothing and I'm not going to get emotional here, I'm not going to be depresso about it, but it's quite sad. That's why I like to keep myself really distracted and that's why most sociopaths like to keep themselves distracted because we don't really want to focus on the fact that we, we feel like there's nothing there. Now my partner thinks that I'm wrong and that if we do intensive therapy and we go down to the surface level that there is a person there. But it's just trauma with false personalities and then things and tricks I've learnt from other people and then the positive attributes that I've collected myself. But there is no me, essentially. Not in my mind, anyway. Alright, another interesting question. Can you describe the feeling when you feel happy? Okay, so my happiness is very, very shallow. I can be outwardly happy, but internally I... I don't know, something really, really good has to happen for me to be genuinely happy. It's kind of this jubilation or this bubbliness that's going on inside it's not common <laughs> I don't feel happy that often I feel satisfied with life I feel that I'm doing adequately well but yeah I don't think I experience happiness the same way that a neurotypical would and she also asked do you ever wish you were able to be more empathetic not at all all right this person says the one thing I keep in mind about sociopaths is that everything you do for someone is not done out of altruism or love it is done because you will benefit from it in some way are you all really capable of love okay so firstly I want you to think about the idiom that there's no such thing as a free lunch nobody's altruistic nobody does things purely from altruism when people hold charity galas and fundraisers they're doing it for a purpose and often they get a cut no I don't do it out of altruism everybody is out for personal gain not just sociopaths and narcissists the fact is that we acknowledge that it's transactional whereas empaths do not it's obviously a grey scale, like it, it goes, it's not just black and white. 
but no, nobody is truly altruistic. I don't believe so anyway. And we are capable of love, as I've answered before. From Nicholas, how do you feel about children? Are you worried that your kids will suffer if they get the same condition? So at first I did not want children at all. I have never really liked them past the age of three. I love babies. I really love fat babies. Like this really chubby with the chubby cheeks, you know. I love them. As for my own, I don't plan to have them until I've had complete therapy for everything that I can provide for them physically, financially, emotionally, all of that sort of stuff. I want to be completely ready before those children arrive. I hope they do not have ASPD or NPD. I hope that they can take the positive qualities out of those disorders and fly with that. So obviously the logical thinking, the intuition, the drive from sociopathy and the ability to love yourself and focus on your positive attributes. Maybe not the same as narcissistic personality because honestly that can be a hollow shell. But some, I want them to be able to self-regulate their confidence. So I don't hope that they get the full-blown personality disorders because they will suffer in that case. Because we all do suffer quite significantly so because of the comorbidities with mood disorders. So yeah, I don't want them to have it, but I want them to collect the positive traits out of the disorders. All right, scary question here. What will happen if the partner hurts the one with ASPD badly? I'm gonna get murdered. <laughs> I'm gonna answer for myself and not necessarily all people with ASPD, but um, I'm very vengeful and I do have a mean streak. Firstly, I will try to rationalize in my mind why you have done them because I am quite logical. But if I realize you're just doing it to hurt me, <laughs> there will be consequences and I'm not proud of it, but I can use the manipulation to be bad. I just don't. But if someone is purposely trying to hurt me, then all bets are off. In summary, what I'd like to say is that all people with ASPD are very varied. We aren't exactly the same. And while we do have the same impulses, we're not necessarily the same in what we do to respond to them. Like, let's say Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy has an impulse to kill people. Ted Bundy does it. I have an impulse to hurt someone. I don't do it because I don't wanna to go to jail. And I don't want to be away from my kitty cats, right? We respond to stimuli differently and there's always nuances between different people, just like there are with empaths. If you have any more questions, always keep writing them in the comment section and I will go through them and I will answer them either through text or I will make another video if you like this one. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all and I really appreciate how we're building a community here. I hope that I can help other people, teens who are just being diagnosed with conduct disorder or antisocial personality when they're turning 18. I want to make them feel safe and be able to explore their personality in a place that isn't judgmental and that can guide them to do the right thing. So thank you. Thank you again. Make sure you guys follow my other socials. I talk a lot about my pageants there and my book Cunning Trap and the book that I'm currently working on which I'm 50,000 words into, I'm very excited about. So the socials are down below.